So the rapid uh, arrival, ascension of artificial intelligence has got a bunch of people scared, headlines coming out every day, and yet you can adapt and you will adapt. But there are some uh, it, parts of industry that seemingly are bulletproof from AI, according to researchers at the University of Pennsylvania. They identified nearly three dozen jobs that they don't believe are in danger of being exposed to artificial intelligence. So we're going to go through some of these. At the top of the list, and there's a pattern here, you'll see, and I will reveal if you don't see it. At the top of the list is electrical power line installers and repairs. Yikes! Uh, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, power line installers and repairs can command a salary of nearly $80,000. However, while it's safe from AI, um, it has a higher degree of fatalities. This job ranked 10th among civilian occupations with high fatal work injury rates. All right, athletes uh, can breathe a sigh of relief. Duh. But let's look at some more practical everyday jobs and let's see if you as you listen and watch can you identify a theme here about jobs that are apparently artificial intelligence proof you're not going to lose your job to the robots or to the computers here we go wellhead pumpers i don't even know what that is but it's oh it's oil field okay thank you joe joe's always got my back on the uh Everyday real work that I'm clueless about. Rail track lane. Maintenance equipment operators. Uh, by the way, I actually took a call on this show from a guy who's been a welder for about 15 years. And he had been offered an opportunity to work for another welding company, but he was going to be monitoring a machine that was going to do the welding. So the machine was doing the welding, but he was monitoring the machine. I thought, well, that's fun. We're all worried about AI, but now we're hiring humans to pay attention to a machine. So this is the adaptation that you have to understand. So uh, that that's in, that's really on uh, on message here. Roof bolters, miners, all of these jobs between sixty to sixty-two thousand dollars a year. Now lower income positions with a median salary between twenty seven dollars and 33000 were jobs like bartender helpers, tire repairs, meat packers, short order cooks, and beyond. Do you see a theme now? Do you see a theme? I see two themes. One, trade jobs are not going to be replaced by artificial intelligence. And I hope this leads to a renaissance or a revival is probably the better word for trades. Where parents and young people aren't turned off by the hard work, but are turned on by a profitable path. Yes, it's hard work. If you work as an HVAC repairman, you are going to be really, really cold. At times, you will be really, really hot. At times, you will be really, really dirty. You might have a dog attack you every once in a while. I'm trying to think of all the hazards, right? What makes it hard? I mean, you're, but you, listen, your bones are going to hurt. Your joints, you're going to have blisters. It's hard. But you know what the return is for hard work on the trades and in the trades? Good money. Stability, agility in that you can do multiple trades, upward mobility. What? What do you mean, Kent? I'll tell you. You take somebody that gets in the trades, they learn the trade. Uh, let me, you know, let me give you a real life example. Let me tell you about my friend Arthur. I've never told you all in the booth about my friend Arthur, but Arthur is a perfect example of this. You tell you about my friend Arthur. So my friend Arthur was always really good with his hands and he was very handy and he was, you know, he could fix stuff and build stuff. And so he got into the construction industry, started out 
as a carpenter. He was a good carpenter, but he was really good with people. So he got a job with a builder, and he became the builder's right hand. So he really moved into a project manager, a foreman role. So he could build, do anything that the carpenters could do. But over time, he became trustworthy, and he was really good relationally. So this builder hired him, and he became a foreman of a carpentry crew. About two years after that, Arthur goes from foreman of a carpentry crew to becoming a general manager for a contractor. So he ran the entire operation for the contractor, making six figures, low six figures, but this is where he is. So Arthur decides he wants to eventually work for himself. Because he knows the construction industry from every side, inside every every way that you can know it because he's working for the contractor, Arthur realized, you know what? I enjoy the intricacies of plumbing. When we hire these plumbers to come in and 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 plumb the house and get it all ready, I really enjoy that. And, and he began to talk to these plumbers. And he began to understand how much money they make, how they ran their business. And so Arthur decided, while making six figures, as he just worked his way up in the trades to go get his plumbing license and got all the training. He did. He went out on his own. And I talked to Arthur about a year ago at a poker game. And I said, Arthur, how you doing? And Arthur went on to tell me he's doing better than he ever is before because he owns his own company. He then got the electrical license. So now he offers electrical and he's got multiple electricians and multiple plumbers working underneath of him. And he's busier than he could actually be, and he's looking for more people. He's making more money than ever, and he has built a sustainable small business to not only is Arthur now a millionaire, but Arthur is employing and training other young people and explaining to them the path that he took. Arthur's not worried about artificial intelligence. By the way, Arthur spent a long time doing hard, dirty work. But Arthur's not doing dirty work anymore. And he's not doing a whole lot of hard work anymore. Arthur's counting his money. Arthur's taking great vacations. Arthur is pouring into the next generation. You think Arthur's parents are proud of him? What do you think? Oh, I forgot to mention in the whole story of Arthur that Arthur doesn't have his college degree. What a loser Arthur is. A millionaire who worked his way up in the trades, has now started two small businesses, is employing people, growing his business, helping them grow their life. This feels like the American dream to me. And yet, you go into America's high schools today, nobody's talking about Arthur. You know what they're telling you? You need to get good grades and get a good ACT and SAT score so you can go to a good college and get a good degree so you can be successful. And Arthur and the Arthurs of the world are laughing all the way to the bank. This becomes a real option when you talk about artificial intelligence and how technology is going to change the landscape of work. Let me tell you what's not going to change. We're going to need people who are willing to do hard work with their hands. And they're going to be more valuable than ever. Wake up, America. There's an opportunity. It's called The Trades. <laughs> 